Good evening, God's Prayer Warriors. Brother Felix here, and tonight we're going to continue reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 17, verses 1 through verse 16. Again, we're going to continue reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 17, verses 1 through verse 16. Uh, thank you for all my brothers and sisters uh, that put in a prayer for me to get better. I am feeling uh, a lot better today. Glory be to God. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I give you thanks for today. I give you thanks for my life. I give you thanks for my beautiful wife, Teresa, and for my beautiful children, Emmanuel, Ariana, Carlos Felix, and Luis Enrique. I give you thanks for loving and forgiving us, Lord. I give you thanks for all your prayer warriors, and I give you thanks for all my brothers and sisters that watch this video. Lord Jesus, I ask what I always ask. In your name, may there be at least one verse for each one of our ears in tonight's reading. That would be two verses per head. And when we hear these verses spoken, may the Holy Spirit be stirred up inside of us. And may we have the courage to apply these verses to our lives. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, let's get right into it. Exodus chapter 17. Water from the rock. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and our livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Walk on ahead of the people, take some, take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will stand there before you by the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The Amalekites defeated. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army, with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this on a scroll as something to be remembered, and make sure that Joshua hears it, because I will completely blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. He said, For hands were lifted up to the throne of the Lord. The Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. These are the words of our Lord, our God, brothers and sisters. Let's break down some of these verses together. All 
All right. Chapter 17, verse 2 reads, So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? Again, the people complained about their problem instead of praying. Some problems can be solved by careful thought or by rearranging our priorities. Some can be solved by discussion and good counsel. But some problems can be solved only by prayer. We should make a determined effort to pray when we feel like complaining, because complaining only raises our level of stress. <laughs> prayer quiets our thoughts and emotions and prepares us to listen. <laughs> now, verse 8, my brothers and sisters, reads, The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. The Amalekites were descendants of Amalek, a grandson of Esau. They were a fierce nomadic tribe that lived in the desert region of the Dead Sea. They made part of their livelihood by conducting frequent, frequent raids on other settlements and carrying off booty. They killed for pleasure. One of the greatest insults in Israelite culture was to call someone a friend of Amalek. When the Israelites entered the region, the Amalekites saw this as a perfect opportunity for both pleasure and profit. But this hostile tribe was moving in on the wrong group, a people led by God. For the Israelite slaves to defeat such a warlike nation was more than enough proof that God was with them as he had promised to be. All right, verse 9, brothers and sisters. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. Here we meet Joshua for the first time. Later he would become a great leader who brought God's people into the promised land. As a general of the Israelite army, he was gaining valuable experience for the greater battles to come. In verse 10 through 13, so Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning, but whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. Aaron and Hur stood by Moses' side and held up his arms to ensure victory against Amalek. We need to lift up the hands of our spiritual leaders as well. Shouldering some responsibility, lending a word of encouragement, or offering a prayer are ways of refreshing spiritual leaders in their work. Amen, brothers and sisters. Great reading. Uh, this is a chapter that I have read before. So it's a great refresher. And it's great... Um, to see that even when Moses's when Moses' arms were tired, you had Aaron and her who held up his hands. They helped him up 
to keep he keeps his hat his hands up with the staff uh, in his hand which helped him defeat the Amalekite army so sometimes when we get tired brothers and sisters we need a brother and or a sister to to help us through and when we see our brothers and sisters get tired sometimes we need to give them a hand to help them get through amen let's end in prayer in the name of god the father jesus christ the son and the holy spirit god jesus christ and the holy spirit i give you thanks for tonight's reading i give you thanks for me feeling better I give you thanks for you loving and forgiving us. I give you thanks for you reminding us that sometimes we do need help from our brothers and sisters to, to hold our arms up when, when our arms get tired. So we can defeat whatever enemies are in front of us. Thank you for, for speaking to us through your word, Lord. Lord Jesus, I ask that you forgive me and everyone watching, that you forgive us of our sins. I ask that you give us a discerning heart, that you fill us with your Holy Spirit, that you remove any evil inside of us and destroy the evil. I ask that you keep us healthy, happy, and safe, that you continue to lead us, teach us, guide us, and protect us. In the name of Jesus, I ask that you heal us of any sicknesses, diseases, viruses, cancers, diabetes, arthritis, degenerative back disc disease, any blood clots, any chest pains, any sore knees, any organs that aren't working correctly, anything that's causing us pain or making us sick. If it is your will, I ask that you heal us in your name, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I ask that you break chains of addiction. Whether the addiction is in us or someone that we love, in Jesus' name, I ask that you break chains of addiction, of drinking, of smoking, of drugging, of lusting, of money, of power, of greed. I ask in Jesus' name that you break chains of sin. If there's any sin that we enjoy doing and if we choose to do it, I ask that the Holy Spirit convicts us heavy in our heart and makes us feel sick in our stomach until we repent and turn away from these sins. I give you thanks for my wife and children, and I ask that you bless, heal, and protect all your prayer warriors and their loved ones. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect my mother, and you heal her of her knee pain, my grandmother, that you heal her of her knee pain. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect my, my sisters, Elizabeth and Yvette. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect my uncle and aunt, Oscar and Olga, and that you heal my uncle Oscar, that you fill him with your Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit removes anything that's making him sick and heals him. I ask that you heal Ma, Mrs. Betty Payne, of her uh, of her knee knee problem, her her knee pain. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect, and prepare Sophie Borge for her next procedure. I ask that you fill her, her father, her mother, and her brothers with your Holy Spirit for strength and comfort. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect Henry Tim. Prayer warrior brother Ryan, that you heal his mother. Prayer warrior sister Teresa, that you heal her husband Ricky. I ask that any one of us who's, who's recently lost a loved one, Lord, whether it's been recently or whether it's been years ago, if we're still hurting from it, I ask that you fill us with your Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit comforts us, that the Holy Spirit takes the, the pain away and fills great memories of the good times that we had with them, Lord. I ask that you bless, heal, and protect our loved ones that are incarcerated, that you change their hearts from the life that got them incarcerated and, 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 and filled them with your Holy Spirit that they may choose a different life, that they may choose you, Lord. I ask that you 
Restore broken hearts. Restore broken relationships. I ask that you reunite fathers and mothers with their children. That you do not let any court separate any families. I ask that that you defend us in any legal problems that any of your prayer warriors has. That you be our lawyer, Lord. That if we're praying and reading and applying your Holy Scripture every day, and if we have the courage to, to lay that legal issue at your feet, Lord, I ask that you resolve it, that your will be done. I ask that you bless you and protect everyone at the Kingdom Music Family Ministry, everyone at St. Paul's Lutheran and Hope Lutheran Church in Aurora, and everyone at the House of Rest Church in Modesto, California. I ask that you bless you and protect Delia, that you fill her with your Holy Spirit, and that, that you remove anything that's that's making her sick or causing her pain or making her worry. I especially ask you to bless you and protect Brother Brian Trejo and his wife and children, Pastor Angel Morales and his wife and children, and Pastors David and Angel Rocha and their wives and children. I ask that you just protect all of us, Lord. Each and every person that's watching this video, that you protect us, Lord. I give you thanks. I give you glory. All the honor belongs to you, Abba, our Almighty Father, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and the Holy Spirit. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, I hope you guys are having a great night. Like I said, thanks uh, for any of you guys out there that uh, sent up a prayer for me. I am feeling a lot better. And I'm going to continue feeling better in Jesus' name. We're going to continue reading, brothers and sisters. I love you guys. Good night.